Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is part 15 of our Learn Lightroom 5 video series and in this episode I'm going to show you how to do some HDR effects with Lightroom. Um, this is prompted by some emails I got. Um, a little while ago I got an email uh, from someone asking me if you could uh, process um, images, uh, HDR images in Lightroom and they meant the conventional way where you take like three to five, seven, nine shots and you uh, merge them um, into an HDR image and you can't do that with Lightroom um, but you can do uh, take a single image and you could do some processing to it that'll make it look like an HDR image and I've had a few emails uh, people saying they were interested in learning how to do that and if I would do a tutorial on it so that's why I'm doing this um, I'm particularly using this image and um, this is just a snapshot I was walking I was in um, Niagara Falls Ontario with two of my three sons and we were walking on Clifton Hill which is a tourist area as you could see and um, I just thought this Ripley's Believe It or Not museum building was kind of amusing so I just uh, took a quick snapshot of it and the reason why I chose this shot to do though is because there's a lot of color a lot of different colors and there's some metal cars and metal always kinds of look kind of looks cool when it's you know in an HDR effect to it um, so that's why I chose this shot. It's not because I think it's a great shot. Actually, I, I think it's a horrible shot. And if I had more time, I wanted to, I wanted to get a better shot of this building. But it was very crowded, and my um, boys were very hungry, and we were looking for a restaurant. So I just took a quick snapshot. But that's a different story for a different day. Um, now I'm going to process this like I normally do. I'm going to go kind of fast. I've covered this in all the previous 14 videos and um, you process it if you're into Lightroom now if you watch my videos and you developed your own style process it your own way I don't encourage people to do everything my way it's just the way I kind of do things um, although I will say that most landscape photographers um, tend they do what I do here they pull the highway highlights all the way down and they take the shadows all the way up um, I, I most of them do that, that I know at least. Um, the next thing I do is I set the white point by holding in the Alt or Option key and then clicking down and the screen turns black and I move this a slider to the right until I get some colors bleeding through and then I back it off a little bit. I do similarly for the black, I hold the Alt or Option key down, I click down, the screen turns white this time and I move to the left until some blacks come through and I usually bring this one uh, considerably further than I brought the white in proportion. Okay, uh, this is our shot now that we've set the uh, white and black point and adjusted highlights and shadows. Next thing I usually do is I, I add a little contrast, I'm going to do that. Alright, everything's normal like I normally do until now. Um, I'm going to turn clarity all the way up. I never do that and I'm going to bring vibrance up to 50. I don't think I've ever in my life brought vibrance up to 50, you know, that high. Then I'm going to bring saturation up to around 20, 25 in there somewhere. Now as you can see it's a oversaturated picture. It's starting to look a little like an HDR shot. Um, you know, very oversaturated colors and it's very clear, you know, a lot of clarity, so sharp, you know, in effect it's sharpness. Clarity is like uh, mid-tone sharpness anyway. Next thing, a lot of people now that do these HDR effects, they like using graduated filters. I've seen um, at least three different people, um, you know, professional photographers that did uh, seminars I had seen do that. Um, I prefer, and I, I don't know of anyone else who does this, I prefer to use the adjustment brush. Um, now what you do when you do the adjustment brush, first hold the Alter Option key down and Effect will turn into Reset and you could click and you'll reset all these sliders. They're reset anyways as you can see. Or you could just double click on Effect and it will reset those sliders. Um, what you want to do now is take Clarity all the way up. You want to bring Saturation up to in the 20s somewhere maybe, around 22. Um, you want it to your feather brush, you want that down to zero, so you want a solid brush. And then I'm going to hit the right bracket key and I'm going to make this brush humongous. Humongous. Saves time. And then I'm going to bring sharpness up a little too. And I'm going to bring that up to around 20, I don't know, 
just a little bit. I don't want to make it too sharp because then you start introducing a lot of noise, but I want it a, a little bit, so till 10. And now I'm going to just paint on the picture. And like this. Now someone left me a comment and uh, in one of my videos and they mentioned when you do this you could hit O for overlay and it will show you where you painted. That way you could see if you uh, missed a spot. And I thank her for leaving that comment although I did do in one of the videos I did talk about that where you could put an O for overlay but she probably didn't get to that video uh, yet. But I do appreciate people leaving me comments and because you know there's so much you could do with Lightroom um, that I don't know it all and I appreciate if someone knows something to offer it and if I you know uh, I'd you know I'd like to learn too <laughs> so anyways okay now we did one brush pass and uh, as you can see it's starting to look real HDR even more HDR um, what we're gonna do is do another one now in each um, in Lightroom 4 and Lightroom 5 you could just do a new brush by clicking new as a matter of fact I'm gonna do that now in Lightroom 5.2, you could do something different. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, so I'm going to click New for a new brush, and I'm going to leave these settings the same. And I'm going to start from the left this time, just so we have the buttons at different ends. And I'm going to add this brush right on top of the other one. So now um, I had clarity at 100 when I did my basic um, processing. I did one brush with clarity at 100, and I've done now uh, second brush with clarity at 100. I'm going to hit O to make sure I didn't hit miss any spots and I didn't so that's good. Now I'm going to do another brush as you probably guessed. Now if you have Lightroom 5.2 um, there's a new feature where you could go over one of these buttons. I'm going to turn overlay off for a minute. Bear with me. i got to hit Shift O and it will change the color. In there. Anyways, it's a less less obnoxious color. Um, what you do is you right click when you're on a button and see duplicate? Just duplicate. It's easy as that. And it added another another shot of it. Um, I don't know like another like you know as though I painted it a third time. So now we have three um, passes of the um, of the brush. Sorry, I'm getting preoccupied with my overlay here. If you, if you hit Shift O, you cycle through the different colors of overlay. And um, see, that one seems to be the least obnoxious of them all. Um, also, if you go up here, Tools, there's um, Tools Overlay. We could say Never Show right now, so I have it off, so it's not is obnoxious and um, but I lose my buttons I didn't even realize that see you always learning something new tools tool overlay auto show there and okay good now we'll go over to this guy just for the heck of it I'll do a different one I'm gonna right click duplicate and now it duplicated it again now you can see it's really starting to get um, that look to it that HDR look. If you look at this car here, people look horrible in HDR. Uh, preferably I would have took this shot without people, but like I mentioned it was very crowded. But see how, I mean, ridiculously over the top HDR it looks right now. Now for the heck of it, we could do another one. And I'll do this one the more conventional way. I'll click on New and I'll paint it on from the bottom, let's just say this time. So the, the, why I like the brush is maybe you uh, the sky is HDR, has that HDR f effect enough and you want to do the HDR effect um, just on the, let's say, the road here. So I could click New again and do another new one. Do it from the left side here. Make my brush a little smaller. And I'm just going to do the road just for the heck of it and the cars. And I'm going to hit O for overlay, and you can see where I did there. I'll hit Shift O to change the color of the overlay. See? Okay. And I'll hit O again to turn the overlay off. And um, that's, um, I mean, I'm going to hit the backslash key now. And there's what we started with. 
and there's this over the top HDR look. If you like that effect, I mean, more power to you. That's um, pretty cool in a way because this was just a, a t in my image, in my mind, it was a crappy snapshot, more for memories to remember I was there, you know, with my sons on this day, and we were hanging out, just the three men, you know, were hanging out. And um, um, it's just kind of a cool image, though. Um, so I'll finish off the image like I normally do. Uh, typically, now I'll, I'd go down to the detail panel and I'm going to add some sharpening. And I'm just going to do what I call my quick and dirty sharpening. I turn the amount uh, up into the 70s and then I go to the noise reduction and I turn that up into the 40s. And that usually gets you right in the ballpark. Um, you could watch um, my episode on sharpening and noise reduction, I believe it was episode five, and I go into detail of how you could do these, set these more precisely. And um, then I'm going to go to lens corrections, and I'm going to enable profile corrections, and I'm going to remove, well, there was a big profile correction there. I'm going to remove chromatic ar aberration. I'm not going to do auto or anything because I kind of like it the way it is. I don't want it to try to straighten it because everything's so crooked that it's probably going to make it really crazy looking. So I'm going to leave that alone and I'm going to go to effects and I'm going to add a vignette and I add the vignette to try to draw people's attention towards the middle of the picture. And I usually don't like too heavy a vignette, just a light vignette. And even that's a tiny bit too heavy. Just back it off a little. Yeah, something like that. Very slight. And that's it. That's um, how I would make a photograph, a typical photograph, look like an HDR shot. And um, that's um, using the adjustment brush and just cranking clarity, sharpness, and um, saturation um, up. That's really all there is to it. And uh, listen, guys, I really appreciate everyone um, watching. And I like when you guys email me with suggestions. I'm getting a lot of suggestions to show how I would process like a night image or a twilight image. And that will be coming next week. So, um, you know, like buildings at twilight with their lights on, stuff like that. So you could be looking for that uh, sometime next week. And I have a lot more, actually, um, ideas that I want to show you in Lightroom. And if you guys want me to do anything, email me at Tony at AnthonyMorganti.com and I'll be glad to um, do a video on it. Um, I also, those of you who watch my um, series on photo critiques, I'm way behind on those. I got a lot in in the last like two weeks. And I don't want to do them all at once. I don't want to flood YouTube with six critiques and my website with six in a row. So I, I like doing one critique a week. So I might do a bunch of maybe two or three of the videos right away, but I won't have them on my website for a while. Um, so you guys could understand. So I'll do those um, hopefully soon. Um, it, but uh, you know, don't have if you want to send some photos in for me to critique, um, don't hesitate to you know I'll I'll get to them when I get to them. Just might take me a little while, but I'll be happy to do them. Um, three to ten ten images. Go to my website. AnthonyMorganti.com, and at the very top, you'll see critiques. Click on that, scroll all the way to the bottom, and down at the bottom, there'll be a link where it will tell you what you have to do to send them to me. And I appreciate everyone watching. If you guys could subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd really appreciate it. And I'd like to thank everyone who has subscribed already. Um, I really appreciate every everyone's support and all the emails I'm getting. Um, I really, really am uh, grateful. So until our next Lightroom series, everybody, I hope you guys take some great shots. Take care.